guys, we're back, Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 154. Bed and Our guest is on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the privilege of the Wrestling Mayhem Show to be here with the one and the only Armando Alejandro Estrada. Welcome to the show, sir. What's up, man? So, uh, how's, it, how's it going for you tonight, Armando? Excellent. Yeah, we've we've been hearing we've been hearing a lot about this es- this restaurant, and uh, and I definitely want to ask you about it. But uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Now we're up in Pittsburgh, and the Super Bowl just went down. So I gotta say, what's your <laughs> thoughts on that? Well, you know, I'm not a native uh, Arizonian by any means, but I won't lie. A part of me was pulling for the Cardinals just because it would have been great for the town and great for the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because, uh the city was a little bummed, but at the same time, the Cardinals had a great year. Mm. But hey, you guys had the better team, and uh, congratulations to the Steelers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, was, uh, I, I, I hope nothing caught on fire there as it did, as it did here. <laughs> 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 yeah, th- thankfully not in my neighborhood, but uh, it was a little scary out there. Yeah, it was I a, understand. It was, little, it was a little dicey going home. From yeah, the, uh, from the game. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, first of all, you know, um, you mentioned the restaurant. I mean, of course, you know, it's been a few months since uh, you've been with WWE. Has this been something that's come up uh, since you've been off, or was this something in the works beforehand? This is uh, the restaurant had been in the works for some time, as far as something I had wanted to do, and upon getting my release from WWE, I was able to pursue it uh, full time. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, with the WWE schedule being so hectic with the travel and all, uh, sometimes side projects have to be brushed aside, you know, and now that I have nothing but time on my hands, I was able to, I was able to pursue that, um, you know, it's been a, it's been a dream of mine to own my own business, and uh, we're about ten days away from opening up our doors. So I'm looking forward to that. Babysteakandlemonade.com coming soon to Glendale, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, every every restaurant has a specialty, and I'm I'm assuming it's steak and lemonade. But do you have like a, a particular a particular dish that you would recommend to everybody? Well, uh, you guys are. Pittsburgh, so you guys are familiar with cheese steaks, and mm-hmm. our specialty is the, is the cheese steak. Uh, we have some specialty sandwiches um, on our menu, and one of them is going to be called the Armando Spicy Steak Sandwich, so I recommend that sandwich to everybody. It's a uh, certain steak sliced up with jalapenos, roasted red pepper hummus with purple cheese on fresh baked bread. Oh. And it's named after me. So it's pretty damn good. Oh, 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 can you send the recipe to my wife, please? Can you just send those sandwiches? <laughs> that sounds spectacular. We have a few things brewing here. I mean, we, we have a, our menu, we just finalized it, and we've actually got some interesting combinations on the menu, to say the least. And once we get the other website, which should be up shortly, uh, everybody will be able to take a peek at all what baby steak and lemonade has to offer. Excellent, excellent. That definitely let us know when that's up. We'll put it up on the website so everybody, everybody else can check it out. Mm-hmm. So, um, so excellent, excellent. Well, um, we are a, a wrestling podcast, so if if we could ask you a few questions about your uh, your time in wrestling, sure. Um, I'm curious. Uh, I was looking, and I, w- I couldn't find a lot of information on you before OVW. Um, you spent you spent your time in Ohio Valley Wrestling, but I was curious, uh, what got you into wrestling originally? How did you uh, how did you come up through the business? Did you, did you, how did I get into wrestling originally? What got me into the business? Was that the question? Right. Yes, yes. Well, I was always a fan. I, I mean, always a fan. Since I was three, four, five, six years old, I grew up in a wrestling household. Uh, my entire family watched the 
AWA growing up in the uh, early 80s in the uh, in Chicago, actually. And my older brothers and father would uh, always have, have the tube set to AWA. Uh, we would get World Class Championship Wrestling. We would get uh, Bill Watts UWF. And we, we used to actually get all that on syndication before we had ever watched WWF at the time. So just something that I always grew up watching as a kid and later as a teen into my adult years, something I knew I always wanted to do and I found out about a school. You know, I didn't know that you could actually go to a wrestling school. And that's what I did. I found out about Ohio Valley Wrestling and uh, I made the move to Louisville, Kentucky. And it was uh, one of the best decisions I made. Wow. Excellent. Now, uh, coming up through OVW, uh, let's see, you were you were very successful as, let me see, uh, the full name was Osama Rodriguez Alejandro. Um, you worked with uh, Muhammad Hassan and his entourage in Davari. Who we also talked to on the Mayhem show here at Davari. That's true. Um, and then Paul Heyman, uh, when he took over as head booker, he moved you on to be an interviewer. Now, um, do you do you feel that your time as an interviewer, you've always been highly praised for your mic skills. Do you think your uh, time as an interviewer in OVW added to that? Well, I, I'm sorry, I'm having a little difficulty hearing you. Could you repeat the question? No oh, I'm problem. sorry. Just the speaker fell in. Um, uh, you spent time in OVW uh, as a interviewer when uh, Paul Heyman came in. Do you feel, now you've always been... Um, uh, praised for your mic skills. Do you feel that your time in OVW added to that? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, when Paul Heyman came in, to when Paul Heyman took over the writing for Ohio Valley Wrestling, he, he allowed me, he basically gave me the opportunity to shine. And what I mean is he, he helped me come out of my shell as a performer and as a character, and really embrace the Osama Rodriguez Alejandro character. And, you know, it's practice makes perfect. You know, the more I spoke, the more comfortable, the more comfortable I became. And, you know, it wasn't uncommon for me, three, four, five minute backstage segments, you know, which is, which is a lot of time on a one hour TV show to have that much mic time. Mm -hmm. And, Again, the more I spoke, the more comfortable I became, and, you know, it was great to work with Paul. You know, he really helped me a lot break out as a performer. WWE took notice, and that's how I eventually got signed. Excellent. Very cool. Now, like you said, you did eventually get signed. It was April 3rd, 2006. Uh, you were called up to the main roster on Raw, and you, were, uh, you started to manage uh, Umaga. Who uh, both of you started off big with a feud against Ric Flair? Uh, can you tell us anything about that? Oh, well, that was great. I mean, uh, not only did I get to debut on one of the most anticipated Raws of the year, being the day after WrestleMania, mm -hmm. not only did I debut in my hometown of Chicago, which is a building that I had gone to many times as a fan, you know, to watch guys like Ric Flair, but I got to debut against one of the guys that I grew up. You know, for all intents and purposes, idolizing one of the greatest of all time, the greatest of all time, it's Floyd Ric Flair. So that was, uh, that was a big deal, you know, and uh, that was a very memorable segment, and I thought it made for a very memorable debut. And uh, the best part about that was I was able to get through it without losing my voice because I had bronchitis, actually. Oh, and I was so worried about the, uh, the microphone not picking up what I had to say that I was literally screaming at the top of my lungs so that I could get the words out. So yeah, that was, uh, that was awesome. Great time, great feeling, great atmosphere. Nice. Now, uh, after, uh, after the deal with Ric Flair, uh, they proceeded to pu uh, push Umaga through uh, a few squ uh, squash matches, and you got more and more time on the mic uh, being able to introduce him. Now, uh, it was around this time you stopped doing the trademark introductions that you were becoming so famous for, because which we, which we were we were big fans here on the show. Absolutely, to be honest. we still do it to this day. Yeah, varying regards of how well we can roll our R's, of course. <laughs> That's true. But <laughs> now uh, we've. Um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. 
Oh, um, now we've heard as to why you did it, but I'm curious, was it, was it your idea to stop doing it or was it, were you instructed to stop? As far as introducing myself? Right. Yes. Well, basically we were, I was doing the introduction and the fans started to take a liking to us, which was not the direction that the Estrada and Umaga character we, we weren't going in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, it was something that had to be done because of the plans WWE had for us at the time. You know what I mean? We were getting ready to go into a program with uh, John Cena, who's the top babyface in the company. Right. And it really didn't make sense at the time to continue doing that introduction because we were getting the wrong reaction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm against the top baby face, so that's why uh, that's why I stopped doing the intro. I see. Um, then, uh, well, yeah, they moved, after that, they moved uh, Umaga into the feud with Bobby Lashley, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell us uh, about the time leading up to WrestleMania. Well, that was around the time that uh, we started the angle with Donald Trump and the Battle of the Billionaires. Mm hmm and, and Vince became uh, more involved with, uh, I guess, managing or seconding the uh, bulldozer. And uh, it was great to get to work with uh, Vince McMahon as a performer. You know, mm -hmm. how do you not learn from somebody like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So working alongside him was great. It was fun. It was uh, eye-opening. You know what I mean? And there were things that I learned from Vince that I wouldn't have learned from anybody else, you know? his company, it's his vision, so he cares about the product more than anybody, you know what I mean, and right mm -hmm. so, so that was a very interesting time, and it was fun, WrestleMania, Ford Field, uh, Detroit, Michigan, 80,000 people, you know what I mean, hey, we are through the Lions, okay, <laughs> the Lions didn't put that many people in that state, yeah, yeah, there's, <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Well, again, we have a better product than the Lions, but anyway. <laughs> um, you know, that was an awesome feeling. Donald Trump, you know, Steve Austin, special guest referee. And uh, what more did you ask for? It was an awesome show, awesome match, and um, I think the fans got their money's worth. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Very cool. Now, uh, shortly after, you were moved to uh, ECW as uh, the general manager. Um, I was. Uh, did you uh, enjoy your time in ECW as the uh, as the manager? Did I enjoy my time? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, it, it allowed me to. Prior to becoming the general manager, I was basically I was working with Umaga and a handful of maybe Vince on occasion backstage. When I became the uh, general manager, it allowed me to work with the number of talents on the ECW roster, both as a heel, both heels and baby faces. So mm -hmm. I got to work with a number of talented performers, and uh, that was the biggest difference, um, and it was very enjoyable for me. Now, now I want to step back for a second. Now, uh, we always talk about, like, there's valets these days and managers, but but not, like, as wrestling fans, we, we definitely miss the good old days of the uh, the Bobby Heaton, the Bobby Heenans, the Mouth of the South. Uh, you seem to be a really good, th you know, throwback to all the stuff we love back today and a good, you know, true manager, a good mouthpiece and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what do you think about the state of managers as they are? You know, uh, you know, sometimes eye candy, sometimes good mouthpieces. And, and where do you think you fit in that? Well, I think, well, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. The manager, ultimately, over the years, over the last, I'd say, 15 years now, has pretty much been pushed aside for the uh, introduction of the diva. And let's face it, we live in a, we live in a world where sex sells. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, there's a good portion of the WWE demographic that would probably rather stare at a nice looking young, you know, pair of TNA than stare at my ugly kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, there, there is that demographic that tunes in to watch the divas and 
ultimately that's what did in the manager. Now there's still a place for the manager if used correctly. Mm-hmm. I think I was an example as far as effectively uh, helping to uh, get a heel to where he needs to get to. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if that's the right choice of words, but mm-hmm. you know, definitely. Yes. Uh, I don't think uh, you know. I don't think Vince is uh, very high on the uh, wrestling manager, to be honest. With you. Uh, now, and I've also we've also read that uh, that you had a hand in uh, helping with uh, Omaga and the, the the moniker the Samoan bulldozer. Bulldozer is that correct? I actually uh, came up with that nickname for the big man. <laughs> now, now was that was that the, there's some speculation that's in response to uh, Samoa Joe was big in TNA at the time and and I, what they call him the Samoan uh, Samoan the, submission machine. Was that was that a direct response for that or is that something uh, completely <laughs> off the cuff? No. Not. It was a situation where I felt the big man needed a big a nickname, mm-hmm. and on our non televised live events, aka house shows, mm-hmm. I would go out there every night, and I was trying to come up with a name for him. And I had tried a few things that didn't really that would that didn't stick. I never I never referred to him on TV. Um, I never used those nicknames on TV. They didn't really fit. Yeah. And then one day, just, you know, I watched that awesome, you know, when he, uh, he hits that running, that running butt splash in the corner. Mm-hmm. I said, God, it's like a bulldozer. And it just hit me. I said, there it is. Samoan bulldozer. And, you know, I started going out there and, uh, and I tried it and it worked and I just started going with it. Excellent. So I actually did, I don't know where I debuted that, but it was somewhere probably in the south, I don't know, Tennessee. And uh, it just, it worked. The next thing I know, you know, that was it. Excellent. Tom Owen Bulldozer was born. What do you think of the, uh, I, I guess we can call it a sort of, well, we call him it from now on, but uh, uh, William Regal, when he was general oh. manager, started referring to Umaga as Umanga. <laughs> Umanga. Yeah, I had a funny story for that. Oh, um, yeah? We were doing a live event in Fort Myers uh, about a year, year and a half ago. And I was general manager at ECW, William Regal was general manager at Raw, and he was announcing the Raw main event, which consisted of Umaga, and I was announcing the ECW main event, and when William Regal announced Umaga, he called them Umaga. And I looked at him and I said, wait a minute, I grabbed the mic and I said, you mean... And I did the name, and it was the first time I had actually did that name in about a year. And, you know, the crowd, you know, the crowd came with it. It was a great response, and <laughs> that was just, you know, some fun that we had with that. I think that's great. You know, it's Regal Sting. We, we, we've called him that ever since. I think uh, at certain points oh, yeah. I forget his real name. <laughs> Umanga. 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 <laughs> sounds like an exotic fruit. Wait, what was that? I said, sounds like an exotic fruit. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> you got something next? <laughs> What's, oh yeah. Um, I was curious. Uh, eventually, became an active wrestler again in two thousand eight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, now, do you, did you miss uh, competing in the ring, or uh, did you did you enjoy more your uh, your role on the microphone? You know, I, I missed being in the ring. Mm-hmm. That was something that I hadn't really done regularly for a few years. And, you know, I love being able to go out on my own and just worry about myself, you know, mm-hmm. for a while. Because for a while it was, you know, I got to manage this guy or I got to work alongside all these other talents. And that's great. But sometimes, you know, I, I there was a lot of times where I missed being, I guess, the performer. The yeah, performer mm-hmm. that can go out and get it done and so to speak mm-hmm. so you know, it was nice to uh, get back in the ring even though it was for a little it was for a short while but you know that's what I do guys I wrestle I'm a trained professional wrestler I went to wrestling school mm-hmm. so you know, I'm a wrestler first and if, uh, if I'm needed to manage or if I'm needed to general manage or ring announce the referee or make sandwiches <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and then now I'm curious. Uh, this idea was uh, it was a while while you were uh, pretty much a, a mic man and a manager, you know, for 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 a good bit. Uh, did you 
how did you keep in shape, or did you have to come back from it? Did you did you were, did they have you doing uh, dark matches periodically, or uh, were you, you just uh, working out in the ring before shows, or how how did you uh, you know kind of keep in the ring shape there? Well, I I always kept in shape. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was a period where when, when I started off with uh, Umaga, you know, for about six months, maybe eight months, you know, it was uh, it was Wendy's every night. <laughs> So, Wendy's and uh, Fry's and, you know, at 11 o'clock at uh, midnight, you know, that isn't, that isn't good. So, I, I brought some pounds on and I realized that, you know, I, I'm wearing a suit, so it's not real, it, it's not visible to the fans as far mm-hmm. as what I got on underneath the suit. So, eventually, I said, okay, you never know when they'll call upon you to get in the ring and take that suit off and take that shirt off. Mm-hmm. So... You know, I, I got myself on a diet. I started uh, increasing my workouts. I, I hit the cardio real hard. And I got back into the shape that I had been when I was working regularly in OVW. Mm-hmm. And as far as the ring shape goes, I would work out before the shows, but I thought no, no dark matches or anything like that. I basically would work out before the shows and just try to keep my conditioning up and working out with a lot of the guys. And, you know, because you never know. You never know one day where they say, hey, today the suit comes off, you got to be ready. So, <laughs> and, and I was I th- ready. And I think I, was ready. I think a lot of people, you know, of course, had seen you in a suit for 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 you know how long while you're in WWE were really surprised when you did take it off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know uh, our one uh, the one the one girl's usually on the show uh, has her own uh, kind of ab list and was kind of blown away. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So. Um, but yeah, you you had a you had a run there, uh, 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 wrestling. Uh, and and one fan question we do have is, uh, let me pull it up here so I get it right. Wait, which one is it? Um, about our favorite guy. Uh, how oh, did about, okay? <laughs> how did you feel being the first man to face the great Braden Walker? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know, it was I was called upon to work with uh, Braden, Chris Harris, and. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was what it was. I mean, you know, it, in all fairness to Chris, I mean, we were doing a pre-tape, which is a backstage interview mm-hmm. that airs to the uh, that airs on TV. Mm-hmm. We ended up having to do that live, and we just kept having to redo it and redo it. And you know, a lot of people don't know this that Chris's uh, name, Braden Walker. That name got changed two or three times, um, even while doing the pre tape where oh, wow. the first time he's seen on WWE programming, his name had changed, the verbiage had changed, the wording had changed. There was a lot of changes being thrown out at this guy who's getting ready to make his debut, so he can't even focus on his match and his yeah. performance because he's got to worry about his lines and whatnot. So, you know, all fairness to Chris, I mean, they, they threw a lot at him just you know, in a short time period, uh, as far as, uh, for preparation purposes, you know, but, mm-hmm. you know, it was what it was. Mm-hmm. I tried to go out there and do the best I could, and I'm sure he did. So. Mayhem show exclusive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you mentioned about it being uh, uh, pre-taped and everything uh, for ECW. And of course, you were on Raw for for a good long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it that transition from that live set to to doing the the, the pre-tapes? Well, there was a there was a period where ECW was live quite a bit. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So we, we were we were live for a good portion. Uh, then towards the end, uh, we were live to tape, which mm-hmm. is uh, you know you got a safety net there. So I mean, live is live. There's no take two. There's no redo. There's no editing. Live is live. You know what I mean? And um, when you're taped like ECW and SmackDown. Uh, Maybe subconsciously in the back of your head, you know, if you think that you, you know, you, maybe you think you have that safety net, I guess. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's, pressure isn't as high, you know what I mean? But still, there's 15,000 people that'll see you, and, you know, <laughs> if you mess up, then they're going to chant, oh, you messed up, you effed up, you effed up. Mm-hmm. You guys know that chant. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're familiar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, and, and, no safety net at all. No safety net at all. 
And, and another thing with ECW, I, I, it, it seems to be like the place where a lot of the new talent seems to come up through. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, you know maybe greener people that came up through. What was it like to to uh, you know of course in your general manager uh, uh, position and and later as a wrestler. Um, what, what what was it like to like kind of see like some like those guys walk in there maybe for the first time for, to to the Fed? Well, you know, I think ECW is a great platform for guys to get a little national exposure. You know, without being on the live, maybe uh, the heavy pressure show that is Raw or you know you know SmackDown. Um, I, I think ECW is great. I think you got guys that that they could hang guys like CM Punk right off the bat. Look at where he mm-hmm. is right now. Mm-hmm. You know, started on ECW. Kofi Kingston is another guy. Started on ECW. Evan Bourne, if it wasn't for, I think he, uh, he messed up his ankle several months back, if it wasn't for that injury, I think you'd be seeing him on Monday Night Raw every week. You know? Mm-hmm. I think Jack Swagger is a great talent who's carrying the ball right now. You know? I think that he's, uh, he's doing... What's, what's asked of him? And, uh, there's a guy that's never been on, on national television, and here he is. He's carrying the ECW title. So I think it's a great opportunity for guys to reinvent themselves, too. And, you know, maybe get an opportunity that they might not have gotten on the other two shows. You know? So I think Shelton Benjamin right now is uh, probably getting, the, you know, one of the, one of the best uh, spots of his career, you know, mm-hmm. and he, he was able to go to ECW for several months and, and do his thing and, and work on the mic, and now look at him, you know, he's, he's out smacked on every week, he's having yeah. fabulous match after fabulous match, mm-hmm. you know, so, excellent. Mike Knox, that's another guy. Now we are big fans of Mike Knox we, here on the Mayhem we Show. We do love Mike Knox. Yes. <laughs> he remind you of Bruiser Brody with the way he looks, he's <laughs> that big, nasty, vicious looking there's nothing I like about that guy <laughs> just the beard man his beard has a beard yeah, yeah that's great. I love it I love it <laughs> now what's what's next what's what's coming up for you we, we've got uh, Baby Steak and Lemonade in Glendale Arizona I believe it was babysteakandlemonade.com uh, what else what else is coming up for you actually actually correction correction chicagosteakandlemonade.com hmm Chicago Steak and We're going to change our links right now for that. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second, guys. Hey, that's the website. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, Steak and Lemonade.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we had some website issues? So, we had some website issues. So, right now, it's Steak and Lemonade.com, and I think it should be up any day now. We're going to be updating it next week. Uh, Steak and Lemonade and all that. Um, Okay. So, yeah, I'm doing the restaurant now, guys. I'm hoping to have my doors open in about 10 days. I'm still working when I can. And if you can believe this, I'm in even better shape than I used to be. Uh, Not possible. Three hours every day in the gym. Uh, I'm working when I can. I got to go down to Puerto Rico to work mm-hmm. for uh, WWC for uh, Carlos Colon. Excellent. Um, always good to go work in Puerto Rico. The fans there are great. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, like I said, I'm working when I can. When I'm not working, I'm here in Glendale trying to get this uh, operation up and running. Mm-hmm. So, oh, and on top of that, I'm also, I've been writing a pilot. I'm in the process of finishing up a pilot for an animated cartoon. Well, I guess cartoons are animated. <laughs> um, it's an adult theme, and I don't mean adult like pornography. I mean it's uh, for adults, you know, mature audiences only. And I'm hoping to shop that some networks that might be interested in Armando's creation. So. Excellent. So very cool. Wow. So I've got a full plate between uh, my sandwiches, my writing, and my wrestling. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and speaking of, is there any other wrestling coming in the future? Or uh, Will will we see Armando in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania anytime Yeah, especially soon? in Pittsburgh. we got a couple feds around here. You got a couple what out there? Uh, we we got a couple uh, indie groups out here. We, mm-hmm. we wouldn't mind seeing you around. IWC. Oh, one no, not that far. You know, uh, Chicago Pittsburgh is not that far. It's about an hour flight. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, anybody interested in, that wants to bring me in to entertain, to manage, to wrestle, to make sandwiches or lemonade, you can reach <laughs> me at uh, bookarmando at yahoo.com. You know, um, like I said, guys, I'm a wrestler first and foremost. 
I love the business, always have, always will. And, um, you know, if it makes sense for a promoter to bring me in, if they want to invest in Armando Estrada, then I'll give them a return on their investment. So Excellent. book Armando at Yahoo.com. And don't forget, myspace.com backslash the real Armando Estrada. Ah. <laughs> we'll be adding that. We'll definitely be adding that to the show notes. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, there's one last thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, I was wondering if we could get a, uh, a liner for the Wrestling Mayhem show. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, we're recording, so whenever you're ready, sir. Amigos, ha You're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem show. And in case you forgot, my name is Armando Alejandro. Just don't show me. Estrada. <laughs> Oh, that's Perfect. fantastic. That That is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Estrada, for coming on the Mayhem Show. You're welcome on here anytime. If you open another baby steak and lemonade nearby, mm-hmm. anywhere, let us know. <laughs> I heard a rumor, and it's just you know, one of those rumors, that next year's WrestleMania may very well be in the Phoenix, Arizona area, specifically Glendale. So, I'm in Glendale, so all the wrestling fans across the world that decide to come out to WrestleMania got to stop by Baby Steak and Lemonade in Glendale. You guys are more than welcome. Probably half price. Now, you guys put eat on the house, on me. So awesome, awesome. Thanks for having me on your show, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Awesome, right. thank you so much. Thanks a lot, man.